Welcome back, parasites. So this topic is radiant angle measurement. So a lot of you guys have heard about radians, and also this shouldn't be too new. You have seen it in other classes. Now we're just going to use it in algebra too. Yay. Okay, so the definition of a radiant. So the radiant angle, and that's called theta, it's like a little circle and a line between it, created by a rotation about a point A. So I drew the diagram here. So you have that point A, and it's this angle that's being created there, theta, using a radius of R and passing through an arc length of S. This is my arc length. is defined as theta equals that arc length divided by your radius. So I would actually even label it here. So this is my radius, and that's my arc length. And likewise, if I were to multiply R on both sides, I end up with the arc length is the same thing as theta times your radius. Now, because this should have been done in geometry, I'm just going to remind you a few things. 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. Likewise, 360 degrees is the same thing as 2 pi radians. That's double 180. So hopefully this makes sense. And that's just something we're going to be using to convert between degrees and radians. And you'll see how we use it in a minute. This is something that you just kind of have to know. And normally this is the one that most people use. But you're free to use whichever you want. But the 180 is the one that most people like. Alright, so exercise one. Determine the number of radians okay, that the minute hand of a clock passes through if it has a length of five inches. So it has a length of five inches. So think about it like a clock hand and that has a length of five inches. And its tip travels, so this is gonna travel a distance of 13 inches. So it's traveling 13 inches until it's gonna reach this location right here. And I wanna find the number of radians. Now thinking back at our definition, our radians is that angle that's created between that. So we're looking for this angle in radians. So we can use the formula that we came up here. So we have the radians is the same thing as your arc length and your radius. So in this case, my radius is five and my arc length is 13. Now you can actually just leave like that. You have 13 over 5 radians. Okay, and that's it. So it's all about reading the problem, and you're going to always gonna make a graph. You're always going to make some type of diagram, and you're going to label what they gave you, and then you're going to try to see, what do I use? Do I use this? Do I use this? Do I use something else? That's always going to be the case. For exercise 2, we're going to convert a 30 degree angle, so they're giving us the angle into an equivalent angle in radians. So this is when we're going to use our conversions. I'm going to use the 180 because I also actually like the 180. So I think about it, okay, I'm looking for 30 degrees, I don't know what that's going to be in radians, so I just kind of put that as an X. I don't know what 30 degrees is going to be in radians. And then I equal it because I'm going to write a proportion and say, okay, so that's equivalent to me having 108 degrees is the same thing as having pi radians. So notice how I matched the degrees at the top, and then I matched the radians at the bottom. And then you're just going to solve for x. So solving for x, if I cross multiply, I end up with 30 pi equals 180x, divided by 180 on both sides, divided by 180 on both sides, you always want to keep everything in terms of pi. So we're not going to actually give me a decimal. We're going to come up with that pi out. So we have x equals 30 pi over 180. And we can simplify 30 um, and 180. Um, leaving you behind with pi over 4. Yes. Because they're both divisible by 10. And then they both go into 3. Uh, nah, not four. Oh my goodness. Six. Three times four is 12, not 18. Oh my goodness. My mental math is horrible. You guys already know this. And then my final answer is pi over six. And I'm done. See you tomorrow.
बाय बाय